What's up, y'all? This is Czar. So last week I showed you 10 things that Studio One version 2 could do that Pro Tools 10 couldn't. And now I want to show you 10 things that Pro Tools 10 can do that Studio One 2 can't. Uh, the first one is bounce to a QuickTime movie. So if you're working with video in Pro Tools and you're editing audio for it, you can save your session or bounce a session down as a QuickTime movie file, which is incredibly helpful. And you just go to bounce to, and instead of bouncing the disc, if I had imported a video into the session, I could bounce it as a QuickTime movie. Uh, number two is bounce to iTunes. So when you go to bounce, you have the option to add to the iTunes library. Number three is the track comment section. So as you can see here, I've got my, for this session, I've got my, the vocal chains that I use for both of these vocals that I tracked in this session. Uh, having the track comments in here is really helpful, especially if you're handing the session off to someone else and uh, you need to add comments, let them know about a certain track or what to do with a certain track. It's really convenient to be able to type the comments um, onto the track section. Uh, number four is create mono aux channels. So when you create a new track in Pro Tools, you have the option of creating a mono aux channel. Uh, there's two reasons that I do this. Uh, one is when I have lead vocals on separate tracks, I'll send them all to a send them all to an aux channel, and on that aux channel, I'd insert some single channel analog gear like my Empirical Labs mic E. And with a mono aux channel, I can send multiple mono tracks into that aux channel and have everything go through that analog gear. You can't do that in Studio One because any aux channel you create is in stereo. And the second reason is sometimes I use a mono delay and I can, with a mono delay, I can pan the delay wherever I want it instead of having it stereo and taking up the whole stereo field. Uh, number five is import session data. So. When you go to import, you can go to session data and let's find a session here. I can import pretty much anything from another session into this one. And you can see here under track data to import, you have a whole lot of options here. Uh, you can even see here, you can import the track comments, track active state, uh, just you can import plugins of course also plugin settings you can import everything from another session into a new session uh, that can be really handy number six move edit selection is automation points uh, it's really annoying i can't do this in studio one but when i'm using automation when in pro tools i can highlight a section and easily automate it, move it up, move it down. In Studio One, I would have to highlight a section and I can't create two points and pull them up or down. I would have to actually create four points and then take the ones on the inside and uh, adjust them how I would like them. Uh, it takes a lot more time, a lot easier to do that in Pro Tools. Uh, number seven is the reverse reverb feature. So this is one of the new features introduced in Pro Tools 10. In Audio Suite, if you go to any reverb, just find D-verb here, you've got a reverse option. And what this does is if you're trying to create a reverse reverb, uh, before there's a couple of hoops you had to jump through to get it to do it. Now you can do it with the click of a button in Pro Tools. And that's on every reverb plugin in the audio suite. Uh, number eight is remove the master fader. So I mix through a dangerous D box using analog summing. I don't use the master fader. I can't remove it in Studio One, which is kind of annoying to always see it kind of hanging out there and it's not doing anything. Uh, in Pro Tools, you've got the option to you know, create your master fader. And if you don't need it, it is removable. Uh, number nine is handling OMF files. Uh, OMF stands for Open Media Framework. OMF allows you to move 
move your session between different DAWs. Uh, when I was working in Logic a lot, I used to take uh, Pro Tools sessions as OMF files or uh, digital performance sessions as OMF files and open them up in Logic. Uh, when you do that, it keeps the keeps your volume controls, it keeps your panning, everything is the same. Uh, it, like I said, basically lets you open up your session in a whole nother DAW. It's not perfect and doesn't work 100%, but it works pretty good, and I've had... I've had pretty good success with it. And to do that, file, export, and you've got the option to export the selected tracks as OMF or AAF. And um, you can save it and send it off that way if somebody else was working in another DAW. Um, video guys use this a lot too. Uh, so it's, it's really helpful to have that. Not all DAWs have this feature, um, but it is handy to have. The last one is split to stereo. So on a stereo track, here we go. I right click and you have the option to split it into a left and right mono channel. Um, you got to jump through some hoops to do this in Studio One, and uh, it's really convenient to be able to do this in Pro Tools uh, with the click of a button or a click of a few buttons. So there you go. There's ten things that Pro Tools 10 can do that Studio One version two can't. All right. Comment on the video and uh, see y'all next time.